Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting April 21st, 2014. Three stories this week, so let's jump in with the first. If you use iPhones or iOS devices and you jailbreak, beware of malware. During a Reddit post this week, we learned that there's some new malware targeting jailbroken iPhones. What happened is in this Reddit post, people that found this malware discovered a library, a dynamic Xcode library on their system called unflood.dylib. And it turns out this was a Trojan on iPhone devices. If you have this file on your system, chances are it's sniffing your SSL connections and probably stealing your Apple ID and user password for Apple ID. Now, no one really knows exactly how this particular piece of malware got on these jailbroken iPhone devices, but most assume it's if you download certain software from unsanctioned repositories, specifically pirated iPhone software for jailbroken phones and and iOS devices. So if you use Cydia and you stick to legal jailbreak software, chances are you don't have it. But just in case you do, be sure to check out the Reddit link I put in the blog post associated with this video as there's lots of instructions to check your jailbroken iPhone device. Now really, jailbreaking is something you should probably leave to the experts. It's something that security researchers like me tend to do sometimes because it's a great way to research iOS devices. But it also disables a lot of the security security in your device, and if you don't know what you're doing, it can lead to things like more malware, so be careful out there. Now while we're talking about this jailbreak story, I do want to bring up during the week Apple also released a bunch of software updates. They fixed some OS X vulnerabilities. They released a new version of iOS that fixes a number of critical flaws, including some SSL man in the middle flaws and some of the fingerprint problems. And finally, they also released an update for Apple TV, so if you're an Apple user, be sure to get those updates or let Apple's software update do it for you. While we're talking about these Apple stories, one other interesting note is an ex-Apple security researcher actually posted some criticism talking about some WebKit vulnerabilities that Apple fixed in OS X over a month ago, but was just fixed this week in the latest iOS update. And she essentially points out that if you fix vulnerabilities in iOS later than OS X, it's kind of like a roadmap that bad guys can use to find these zero-day vulnerabilities. So she recommends that they release these fixes across all platforms at the same time. In any case, some interesting news for Apple users. Next up is a story about a router backdoor that was hidden rather than fixed. During the week, a researcher released a new PowerPoint presentation talking about the rediscovery of a backdoor he had already warned CIRCOM about. You probably remember a few months ago, I talked about a vulnerability affecting many routers, routers from Linksys, Netgear, Cisco, and a number of other manufacturers that use the CIRCOM chip. Well, it turned out that CIRCOM had a hidden backdoor. Essentially, it was a a port that was listening for a special packet, and if you send it that packet, it kind of like was a manufacturer backdoor that allowed them root access to your router. And this backdoor was apparently sometimes exposed on the internet. In any case, this was discovered back in December of last year. The researcher reported it, and apparently CIRCOM was supposed to have fixed it. But during Easter, the researcher realized they didn't fix it, they just limited it in some fashion. Essentially, they changed the backdoor in a way so that it was only accessible from the local area network or from a ISP one hop away, simply because ISPs one hop away can craft certain frames to your routing device. In any case, if someone on your local network can send a special combination of packets to your router, they can still access this backdoor and gain full administration 
administrative privilege on your device. And the researcher even released proof of concept code. So it'll be interesting to see how the router manufacturers in CIRCOM respond to this. It really shows kind of a bad practice. You should not fix back doors by just obfuscating them a little bit. Now recently I released an article on dark reading talking about how obscurity can help security a little bit if it's actually used in conjunction with real security practices, good security design. However, by itself, security by obscurity is no good, and hiding the back door a little bit more on a local network is not good security. So hopefully CIRCOM will fix this soon. The last story I want to cover is a little bit of an op-ed about our government and how they're using cybersecurity right now. During the week, the New York Times and some other publications released a story about the infamous Sabu. This was an anonymous and lolsec hacker that was caught by the FBI, but apparently has been used by the FBI to attack other nations and other countries for a while as part of his deal with the FBI. Now, I won't go into all the detail, but some of the court records for Sabu's case has leaked. And according to this New York Times article, after Sabu was caught by the FBI, the FBI actually used him to attack other countries' websites. And during those attacks, Sabu used a zero-day vulnerability in a popular uh, web control framework called Plesk. Now, what I really don't like about this story is apparently it means the FBI knew that this informant hacker was using using a zero-day vulnerability. And rather than help the whole world by reporting this flaw to Plesk so they can fix it, the government or the FBI elected to allegedly use him to exploit this vulnerability against other people. And I think this is really bad practice. It kind of goes in hand with some of the NSA leaks, the fact that the NSA wanted encryption algorithms weakened and so on and so forth. Now, while I realize governments will have cyber espionage teams, and this may not be a bad thing if they follow some sort of groundwork that everyone agrees on. But for our governments to actually withhold security information from the public because they want to exploit them just puts everyone in the world at risk, including their own citizens. If you know about Zero Day, you should work on getting them fixed so that your citizens aren't vulnerable. That's just my opinion. In either case, I'll post a link to the article in the blog post associated with this video. So that's it for this week's video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And if you like more security news, be sure to follow our blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com, where I post this video and other stories. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. Or you can follow my company, WatchGuard, at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.